Small screen myeloma is such an important and very controversial area. And I think it's a perfect area now for us to all understand better what's going on with the patients and classify them better. I think the word small screen myeloma is so heterogeneous. Uh, so many patients look very much like an MCAS, very early, and they may never progress in their lifetime. And there are other patients who look more like a real myeloma and within a few months to a year would progress to end organ damage. And I think the first thing we need to do is have better classifiers of who truly would progress in their lifetime and who will not. We need better terms than the word smoldering myeloma. And we need better uh, markers other than the clinical markers we have. I think it's wonderful that we have 2220, which are new markers of clinical progression, 20% uh, plasma cells, light chain ratio of 20, two grams protein, but that's not enough to tell us biologically who will progress faster. And I think we need better markers in this. Our uh, genomic markers, our exome sequencing data will come out very soon in JCO. It's 250 patients that we've done sequencing analysis on them to try and define specific biomarkers for disease progression. And indeed we found that MIC translocations or amplification MAP kinase mutations, as well as uh, DNA repair mutations are important for those patients. I think the first thing we do uh, right now is potentially bringing this to the clinic. I would love to be saying to my patient who I see today as a low risk smoldering clinically, let me see if you actually have also low risk genomic criteria. I would also like to add immune microenvironment factors that we just discovered. Can I tell a patient that his NK cells are normal or abnormal? Can I tell you that your T cells have a higher T reg or not? Would that help us classify who are the patients who should benefit from active therapy or benefit from vaccines? Maybe this is the way for us to define better smoldering myeloma, defining them clinically, but also genomically and uh, immune microenvironment. And then finally, how do we treat those patients? I think the data from Sagar Lonial and marie Mathieu Mathias were wonderful because for the first time, we know now that early uh, prevention of progression can save lives, can make a difference in our patients. And I think this is the most important piece, but we need to add to it. How can we understand better who truly should benefit from Revlimid alone or someone who would benefit from four drugs like marie V is doing or from three drugs? like many of us are doing. Should we give proteasome inhibitors to everyone? Should we give it only to the 414 translocation patients? So I think it's an opportunity for us now as members of the myeloma community to actually reclassify how we treat patients with smoldering myeloma. Instead of having everyone have the same treatment, let's actually classify them better as who are the patients who would benefit from four drugs versus two or three drugs versus only vaccines and minimal interventions to prevent progression. And the hope is truly we prevent progression in everyone. My hope is that we screen early and we're doing that in the PROMISE study and in Iceland. We discover patients with MGAS and smoldering. We describe who truly will progress in their lifetime and we treat you in a precision way. We treat you in a better way than saying everyone will have the same treatment. And hopefully no one will actually be diagnosed with end organ damage. We will never get myeloma. Uh, as we see it right now with people having fractures in their bones or anemia or renal failure.